taking over as chairman of the FCC in June, Julius Janikowski has launched an inquiry into competition in the wireless industry, questioned why AT&T and Apple weren't opening the iPhone to more applications, and proposed new net neutrality rules requiring companies, including wireless firms, from slowing or, or blocking legal Internet traffic from their networks. So you can imagine the interest when Janikowski agreed to be the keynote speaker to Wireless Conference today in San Diego. I spoke with the chairman right after his speech and asked him if he had a message today for the industry. My message was that there's a lot of work to do to make sure that we achieve U.S. leadership in mobile. We need to unleash spectrum for mobile broadband. We need to remove obstacles to deployment of mobile broadband. We need to preserve a free and open internet as we move into a mobile broadband future. And we need to protect and empower consumers. Mr. Chairman, as you know, there have been some in the wireless uh, industry who have questioned whether or not uh, your FCC may be moving, taking aim at that industry as well. You launched this inquiry into competition within the wireless sector. Are you worried that some players in the wireless space are simply wielding too much power? I think it's such an important industry for the country. So much of our economic growth and job creation in the future will come from mobile. It's the fastest growing part of part of our economy that's doing well, that, help, that can help bring us out of this recession and give us an enduring engine for economic growth in the future. So I expect that we will be working with the wireless industry, with all parties, uh, for a very long time on plans where together we can make sure we have mobile leadership for the United States. What about the, this inquiry? Can you give us any better sense what it is you hope to learn from this? Well, we're going to start the process later in the month in October. The FCC has been, uh, has looked at open Internet policies before. It adopted open Internet principles. It enforced open Internet principles, but it did it in a way that left a lot of people confused. We need now, in my opinion, sensible, fair rules of the road that make it clear that a free and open Internet will be preserved. We don't need heavy-handed and prescriptive regulation. We need rules that anticipate that technology will continue to change. But we need to make sure that there's no confusion that the Internet will be a platform for innovators, for speech, whether it's access through a desktop that's plugged into a wall or a mini computer in your hand or a netbook with an air card. Mr. Chairman, the, your net neutrality push, there are some here in Washington, as you know, and, and across the country, who do raise the question. A lot of these companies built these networks. They spent billions to do it. Does the government, does the FCC really have a role here in telling them how to operate them? Well, the FCC for 75 years has worked with the mobile industry on making sure that we have a mobile industry that works. The FCC is the country's agency that manages Spectrum, a precious and unique national resource. The FCC has very important authority and responsibility here, and we all share an interest in making sure that the Internet as an engine for job creation, as an engine for job growth, remain free and open as we move into this exciting future. How confident are you that uh, in the future, when the FCC finally sits down to, to finalizing rules in this area, that you're going to have the votes of the FCC and Congress isn't going to step in the way? Because as you know already, some Republicans are threatening to do just that. Well, the proceeding starts, as I mentioned, in October. We are going to run open, transparent, fully participatory proceedings. We're going to roll up our sleeves with people from the wireless industry, with innovators at the edge of the network, with consumers, with economists, uh, in uh, an effort to make sure that we have smart policies for the country. The FCC is our country's one expert agency on communications. It needs to be smart about the technology, smart about the business and economics, smart about the law, smart about history, and smart about the real needs of consumers and innovators. The decision from, uh, from uh, AT&T to allow Internet calling services like, uh, like Skype onto the, the iPhone system, the iPhone network, uh, also Verizon's decision to partner up with Google. Do you take those as encouraging signs? Are they getting the message, if you will? I, I applaud uh, both of those moves. I think it's, uh, it's good news for consumers when AT&T said in response to the letter that the FCC's wireless bureau sent that it would look at Internet voice applications on the iPhone. We were encouraged and we're pleased that the AT&T made the announcement it did yesterday. Now, remember, this is 
one company addressing one service in a voluntary way, uh, it doesn't in any way reduce the need for fair and sensible rules of the road that preserve a free and open internet on an ongoing basis. Mr. Chairman, you mentioned today about spectrum as well, the crisis perhaps in the future in terms of enough spectrum to go around for all the, uh, uh, the mobile efforts that are out there, the broadband efforts. What can the FCC do to address that spectrum issue? Well, this looming spectrum crisis is, I think, the single biggest threat out there to a vibrant, successful broadband mobile industry in the United States. It's a real problem. We've authorized at the FCC about a threefold increase in spectrum coming online, which sounds fine until you realize that mobile capacity is likely to increase 30-fold. That's a 10 to 1 gap. We've got to close that spectrum gap. It means we've got to look at the spectrum chart. There are no easy pickings, but we've got to identify spectrum that can be reinvested in mobile broadband so that we can make sure that the U.S. has a mobile broadband infrastructure that can lead the world. Chairman Janikowski has a lot on his plate these days. In addition to his net neutrality push, his examination of the wireless sector, by February he has to submit to Congress a plan to bring broadband to the third of the country that doesn't yet have it.